session and there are no proclamations tonight. And I will start with committee reports. Don, we'll start with you. Uh, thank you. I just want to point everyone's attention. Um, you may have heard about it, but I just want to remind everyone that we have a COVID testing center here in town at St. Jude's Church. It is open Monday through Friday from 9.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. and from 9 to 12 on Saturday. Uh, they have a wide range of what they're doing. They're doing PCR COVID swabs, so that's the, uh, that's the longer test. Uh, they're doing flu tests, respiratory test panels, and they're also testing for COVID antibodies. Um, all insurance companies are accepted. There's no appointments. Walk-ins are welcome. Patients will not receive a bill. So if anyone's not feeling good and they suspect that they may um, come into contact with COVID, um, from what I understand, what I, what I observed when I did a couple of check-ins, they move pretty well in there and uh, they're, they're, they're pretty efficient in um, moving everyone through with a sense of uh, privacy and distance and um, and uh, they they have a staff and uh, that, that knows what they're doing so if you want to get a COVID test it's here in town at St. Jude's Church so I just wanted to remind everyone about that everything is going well here I don't have anything new to report specifically here at the center just I, I gave a big report last time just that everything is going along very very smoothly and we are um fulfilling all of our um obligations and um and services to the town to the residents so i'm very very happy to be able to say that that's it for now mayor thank you don brad you're, you're up mayor uh, acting chief Potusky asked me to read a letter into the record uh recognizing uh, an individual on the force starting out i'm proud to announce the promotion of daniel kern to provisional sergeant Kern began his career in Hopakon in 2002 as a part-time dispatcher while attending Dowling College. After Kern graduated college in 2004, he became a full-time dispatcher for Hopakon. Kern worked as a full-time dispatcher for Hopakon until December of 2005 when he went to Andover Police Department, who hired him as a police officer. 2014, Kern transferred back to the Hopakon Police Department as a patrol officer. During Kern's time in Opacon, he has been a member of the firearms unit, a field training officer, and served as a detective for the past three years. In the course of his career, he has earned the Mothers Against Drug Driving Award four times, the Valor Award in 2013, the Exceptional Service Award in 2015 and 16, and Opacon Officer of the Year in 2016 along with the New Jersey Narcotic Enforcement Officer Award in 2020. I know Kern's knowledge and experience will lead our department in a positive direction, and we're honored to have him, respectively, Acting Chief McCluskey. And that's all I have there. Thank you, Brad. Rich, you're up. Thank you. Uh, um, I really have nothing, uh, nothing for anyone. So pass it on. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. John, you're up. Uh, thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> um, I'm not going to mention the COVID testing uh, facility that set up shop at, at St. Jude's because um, Dawn handled that better than I would have, actually. I did have that on my notes, uh, just trying to get the word out. Um, from committees from Municipal Alliance, we are trying to get Hero Boys started up again uh, for this season. Not sure what's going to happen with girls on the run. Girls on the run we didn't have last year because we didn't have enough participants. Um, and we are looking to do a in-person, hidden in plain sight. Uh, I'll have more information on that later. Uh, we're not sure if we're going to do it in the school or perhaps a firehouse, but we're looking to do an in-person one. The county is the county center for prevention is going to be doing one virtual on in on march 23rd and again i'll have more information on that later um but we're looking to do a live one um, <clears throat> also since the school mask mandate is being lifted uh we're hoping to get be able to get back into the schools and start doing some of the programs we do there in, including perhaps some movie nights we're looking to do a an anti-vaping program um 
And that's pretty much it. One other thing, not from any committee, but, and I may or may not have mentioned this last meeting, but the Hudson Farm Charity Hike has been scheduled for May 14th. Um, that's a great event. Uh, if you like to hike, it's, you, you can't look for better property to hike on. So again, I'll have more on that as we get closer. That's it, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, John. Ryan, you up? Okay, uh, Sussex County Municipal Utilities Authority. I'll start there. Um, the next paper shredding event is February 18th. That's this Friday. The next sharps disposal event is March 3rd. Uh, over at the Chamber of Commerce, our next meeting is March 11th. Uh, the annual dinner that's been postponed from February is now slated to be March 31st. Um, and on the schools, um, our uh, Habakon High School cheerleading squad took second place at Nationals in Ocean City, Maryland this past weekend. Congratulations. They did a great job. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Jan, you're up. Sure. Um, so on schools, uh, I met with Dr. Piccarillo on Wednesday. February 9th to discuss some of the stuff that's going on in the schools. The mask mandate will end on March 7th and Hapakon has decided to make masking optional. Uh, they're currently awaiting guidance from the DOH on potential quarantine changes for guidance on masking on buses since that is a federal mandate. The quarantine regulations remain five days as long as the symptoms are waning. Uh, Dr. Piccarillo met with Alphabest on Monday, February 7th to discuss potential summer camp. There is a lengthy process to get camp approved, which includes attorney review of contracts and board of ed approval. Based on the information the district has received, they are under the impression that the borough does not wanna run camp and therefore will set something up for structure and socialization during the summer only if the borough does not set up recreation camp. This item may be on the agenda for the board of ed meeting on Monday, uh, March 28th. The district passionately believes in the importance of serving every student so they are equipped with skills to success after graduation, whether they're entering the workforce, military, a two-year college, or a four-year college, and they will be starting a construction <coughs> program September of 2022, adding to the Cosmo Child Care and Broadcasting Journalism programs already in place. Our district is facing at least a $1.9 million state funding cut for year 2022 and 20 to 2023, and the Super and Board of Ed are working together on creative solutions to keep a pack on moving forward while keeping all the programs open and available to our students. Dr. Piccarillo expressed interest in partnering with the town in the future in order to provide more opportunities for Hopacon students and their families. Also in schools, I wanted to wish a congratulations to Christy Brennan for surpassing her coach and fellow Hopaconite, Jamie Douglas, to become the all-time leading female scorer in basketball. For the ambulance department, I attended their meeting last night uh, they ended the year with 864 calls in 2021. The dispatch to scene um, time was nine minutes and 52 seconds. Um, the Department of Health average for Sussex County, just to give you a sense, is over 23 minutes. This year, they're going to be focusing on recruiting. There is a Not Just Pizza fundraiser on February 24th. They were able to get a FEMA grant approved for $18,000. Um, so that was really awesome. Um, and I actually met with uh, Senator Oraho and Assemblyman Parker Space uh, at the beginning of February to discuss new legislature in regards to community-based uh, emergency uh, EMS, EMS departments uh, that have that third caveat of being paid in the, during the day and volunteer in the afternoon. Um, they changed the assembly and Senate, and then it was signed into law on February 1st, where we went back to pre-COVID um, staffing on ambulances based on if they were licensed or volunteer. And it, it crushes ambulance departments like ours, uh, Lakeland, and also Sparta, uh, and affects 30,000 residents in Sussex County. So in Senator Oraho's and uh, the Assemblyman uh, Worths and Space's district, it affects 30,000 people, so much so that Lakeland cannot staff their evening ambulance department four nights a week because of the staffing. Um, I also wanted to wish a congratulations to Acting Chief Megan McCluskey on passing the Chief's exam. 
I wanted to mention that if she is named chief of police in Hopakong, she would not only be the first female chief in Hopakong, but she would also be the first female chief in Sussex County. And that is all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Jen. Ron, administrative report. Yeah, real briefly, uh, Mike, thank you, Mayor, thank you. I just want to commend again to DPW guys for, since we had our last meeting, we've had another, you know, weather issue. In the midst of that weather issue, we had uh, three more water leaks that happened. So they're dueling up, up, taking care of snow, ice, and water leaks. Um, but hats off to the guys. They do a phenomenal job on both ends, and I'm, I'm very proud of them. The, uh, we had our first uh, meeting today on pre-depositions for the PFOS claim that we have during the, the uh, multiple suit uh, against 3M and DuPont over PFOS. We had our first meeting today. Depositions for the borough will happen through the month of April, and we'll proceed with that as well. There's more to come with that. There may be some options for private individuals to um, participate in this suit. I'll have more information on that uh, in the next week or two. But if we have enough people in the borough that are, pro- are testing positive with the PFOS and their private wells, they may very well be able to join um, our lawsuit with other members. So that's more to come on that. Um, the uh, Steve, the, the fire chief uh, was so gracious to open up a bay over in the firehouse number three. So now we have a storage area that we can stage the new elevator and you'll start seeing that delivered by the end of the week and you'll start seeing construction on that by the middle to end of next week. Um, And then lastly, you see, we've got the introduction of the budget. I just wanna just hands off to the finance committee for your support. Our CFO Lorraine did a phenomenal job on this. My department heads all came together in a very collaborative method to get this, this budget secured. And I think, it is certainly in my tenure here is, is the earliest that we've introduced a budget. Um, I don't know about the history of Hakon and Hole, but this is very soon in our in our past five years of getting budget introduced. And I look forward to the auditor's report at the next meeting at the adoption. So with that, that's all I got, Mayor. Thank you, Ron. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to open the meeting to the public. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. Do you have anybody in the waiting room, Ron? Aye. Just let them in. So uh, an opportunity will be given to the public for commentary. Comments are limited to one comment of no more than five minutes. All right, Ron, let her rip. All right. Go to your lower right uh, reactions button, raise your hand, and I'll acknowledge you, and you come on in. Here we go. Heather, you're up. And still I can answer to uh, what the council is doing about summer Mm -hmm. camp, given that the person that came on at the meeting, the last meeting, said that we weren't having it because we were stepping on somebody's toes. Uh, So we I respectfully ask that the council that is oversees these committees and commissions and whatever else uh, step in to look into why we're not doing a summer camp because every reason that's being given to us makes no sense. And we had a board of ed member who said that the same person from the commission was wrong in the fact that the school is not running the summer camp via Alphabest unless the rec department doesn't do theirs, in which case they will step in and help. But it is not an established business. Is that it? Okay. All right. Thank you. Next up, Ron. Mayor, I don't see any. If there's no more, I would like to move to bring it back. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 With, the, with summer camp, my understanding is that the Recreation Commission decided not to run that program this year. Uh, and if any, I, I can't speak for them, but 
that's my understanding that they're, that's their decision. All right, so where are we? Minutes. Are we at approval of minutes? <clears throat> well, I'll make uh, the, the minutes of two, 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 two. I'll make that motion twice. <laughs> <laughs> Second. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hoverkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Thank you. Resolution uh, 2022-45, approval of the build list. <clears throat> um, does anyone need anything removed or discussed? Uh, I just have a question about three of the bills. The three liens, we already passed the, the resolutions to release those monies. 22-00276, 22-00277, 22-00278, that's a question. Do we already pass resolutions for those liens? I don't think we're doing resolutions for those anymore. I'm not sure. We, there's there's a certain process that we used to do resolutions for through the for the tax office, and because it's going on a bills list, um, it was decided that we didn't have to do resolutions for them. I don't know if it's liens or if it was something else. I know that Patty had a discussion with Mr. Urson, I believe it was last year about that. Oh, okay. Cause we, all the liens, cause I know that they, it's just money going through. I know it's just, it's been explained to me, but we've usually passed <clears throat> resolutions for those kinds of liens for the money to pass through. Am I, am I thinking of something else? I might be. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, we're good with that. All right. Uh, Call the roll, please. Uh, we don't have a, a motion and a second. I made a motion. We don't have a second. I'll, I'll second, second it. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Uh, approval of the consent agenda. I'll move it. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Thank you. Resolution, resolution 2022-46, reappointment of Valerie A. Egan as municipal clerk. I'll make that motion. I'll second. second it. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Thank you. Resolution Thank you, 20 everybody. <laughs> Resolu Resolution 2022-47, authorization of the shared municipal court agreement with Stanhope. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Resolution 2022-48, authorizing canceling water capital improvement balances. So moved. Second. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Ordinances, these are introduction of ordinances. Ordinance 3, 2022, funding for various water utility improvements. Bond ordinance providing for various water utility system and related infrastructure improvements by and in the Burma Pacon in the County of Sussex, state of New Jersey, appropriating $1 million, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $1 million bond or note to finance the cost thereof. So moved. 
Second. Call the roll. That, I, think, camp. Uh, I think the, the ordinance numbers are wrong. Um, or the, the funding for the grant funding is three, but on the agenda it's four. And the funding for the water improvements. Well, they're the three and a four. Right, but they're reversed. They're reversed on the agenda. I know. Uh, in my agenda, they are. I have ordinance. Okay, well, I will, I will fix them then. I will which, fix them. Just which is which. That's all I need. Ordinance 32022. Which Whatever's on the... Whatever's on the agenda, I will make the the ordinances match. Okay. Okay. Whatever on the agenda. Okay. So so we'll we'll just go by the agenda and we'll make sure the ordinances match that the number. I I, I get it. Okay. We'll make sure they match. Okay. Would you like me to call the roll, Mayor? Yes, please. Okay, Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Ordinance 4 2022 grant funding for various water utility improvements, capital ordinance providing for various water utility improvements by and in the borough of Pacon and the county of Sussex, state of New Jersey, appropriating $742,414.06, therefore, from grant proceeds. So moved. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hoffer Camp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Mary on mute. God, I hate that. Thank you, Mike. The, the, last, the last sentence of that was received pursuant to Federal American Rescue Plan to pay for the cost thereof. So the 742000 is from the, the second part of the American Federal Rescue Plan. It, it's not a loan, it's a grant. All right, final hearing, Ordinance 1, 2022, amending one. Uh, 16325 concerning the Jefferson Dog Park, an ordinance of the Borough of Pacon, County of Sussex, amending section 163-25 of the code of the Borough of Pacon concerning the Jefferson Dog Park. So I'll make a motion. Second. Second. <laughs> any, any, uh, 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 I'll open that for uh, to, to the public for any questions or comments. Okay, Mara. Mara, Mara you're muted. You're, you're muted, Mara. Okay, I have a question. Um, you're at, you're saying that um, any attendee can eject people and enforce the rules. Or who are the attendees? Anybody that's using the park? Or are we appointing people? And if so, are they going to get paid? Thank you. Ron? Yeah, the, the uh, ordinance was to clean up some classifications that were there that we don't have that we're going to do that. It took okay. out the recreation director and stuff of like that. We made we left everything the same. Yeah, pretty much it, it's our law enforcement people that enforce the rules there. Yeah, and, and, and Mayor, to be clear, I, I, I'm not aware of any plan that you're planning on appointing somebody to you know, supervise the dog park. But in the event that you did, that person would be uh, authorized to to uh, write uh, complaints for violation of the rules. Correct. Right now, it's under the auspices of our uh, animal control officer, so which which is a police officer. All right. Ordinance two, 2022, establishing a cap bank. Calendar. Oh, we didn't. We didn't vote, Mayor. Oh, okay. I need roll. roll. I'm sorry, getting ahead that's, of myself. That's okay. Call Mr. Hoffer Camp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. 
Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. <clears throat> Ordinance 2, 2022, establishing a cap bank. Calendar year 2022 ordinance to exceed the municipal budget appropriation limits and to establish a cap bank as per NJSA 40A colon 4 dash 45 14. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, I'll entertain any questions or open up to the public on any questions for that. Nothing wrong? Move to bring Nothing. it back. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Ms. Roberts? Yes. Mr. Schindler? Yes. Mr. Smith? <laughs> yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Now, old business, we have uh, an approval for extension for payment of auction property. Ron, you want to go over this or John to? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be happy to, Mayor. Mayor, uh, uh, Mr. Rusk, who you have a letter from, uh, he uh, has been a bidder uh, at some auction properties. Uh, as you know, in the ordinance, we have a requirement that the closing occur within a set amount of time. Uh, the amount of time uh, it, from time to time, we grant administratively small extensions, especially during COVID, um, where it's appropriate. But in Mr. Rusk's case, uh, he was granted an extension and uh, did not come to close uh, those properties within the time period for the extension. He requested an additional extension, and I told him that my position was that it had to be granted by the council. Um, because there's only so much administrative discretion uh, that you have. So uh, he appropriately wrote a letter to the council requesting that the auction uh, closing be extended. Uh, I am uh, supportive of that extension. I think this is a process issue, but I think you should uh, consider granting a very short extension because we're already well beyond the time that was contemplated for the auction closing. Um, the other alternative is that the council could decline uh, the extension, and in that case, the, uh, the, the auction would be void and the properties uh, would go back into inventory and potentially be auctioned again in the future. But uh, the council has Mr. Rusk's letter before you, and I don't object to a short uh, extension. Uh, but it's a matter of process that I think the council should actually vote on it, set the date, and if uh, if the closings don't happen by that date, then the auction is void. I'll entertain a motion to to grant the extension. Is it was there a time on that, John? You know, Mayor, I I I I would uh, I would think that a ten day extension would be appropriate. Um, there's, I don't think there's any reason to make everybody hustle faster than that, but I think we want to set procedure in a, in a firm time frame. Yeah. Okay. I'll make a um, motion. Well, ten days from what when? Because ten, ten days, it was supposed <clears throat> to close the February first. That would be February tenth. Yeah. But it says here that they're closing on February seventeenth. Can we give them like an extra week after the seventeenth or an extra no, ten Jen days? Yeah, Councilwoman. What I was thinking was ten days from today. It's, it's fair to be on. <clears throat> As 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 what we oh, would think. okay okay I was I was if you're granting a ten day extension I would take it as ten days from the vote today. No, we're, we're, we're going to we're going to motion. We're going to say it's ten days from today. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's no guesswork. Yeah, I think Mr. Uh, Young just made that motion. No, I second. Dawn, Dawn made the motion. I second. I made the motion. I read his letter. This guy's ready like tomorrow, so Call. we're fine with the ten days from it's today. Yeah. Making that yep. motion, John did a second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Thank you. It, the motion passed. Uh, on the new business, we have the introduction of the 2022 municipal budget. And again, I really have to thank our our CFO, our administrator, the department heads, and the finance committee. We have again 
uh, a, a budget with no municipal tax increase. So one that's so small you can't even measure it. So I with mean, the introduction, uh, do we move it or is it just an introduction because we're waiting for the uh, auditor? Ron? Did, did, we, we actually need a motion and a second and we vote on it. Yeah, this is okay. the introduction. We're, introdu we're introducing Fine. it. I'd like to move the uh, introduction of the 2022 municipal budget. Second. second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Hofferkamp. Yes. Ms. Johnson. I, I have an issue with, with voting yes on this. I only got this budget this morning and I actually wasn't even able to get over to the municipal building today to get my physical copy and I can't open it on my computer. Um, so well, I have not even it, it, looked at the, it, it, I, I cannot vote yes to introduce a budget that I haven't looked at or been able to ask questions on. So my vote is no. Okay. Ms. Roberts. Yes. Mr. Schindler. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll, I promise I'll try to be brief tonight. Oh, can can we, I'm sorry, I, are we, I know. Can we have a discussion perhaps about maybe going back to in-person meetings? I'll, I'll get back to you on that. I, I'm still, I'm still reviewing numbers. So, uh, uh, yeah, so we're, we're, I, let me finish looking at numbers and, and uh, do some risk assessments and then uh, I'll, I'll poll the council on that. Uh, I don't understand why we can't have a discussion about it now. Okay. Well, that, that, that the discussion is I have to make a decision and, and do some risk assessment based on what I see going on. And so far, I can tell you our numbers look phenomenally good. But let me finish. Let me finish reviewing that. Uh, I just I'm going to err on the side of being really, really uh, careful on behalf of the council and the people. So. Uh, so that will be we'll we'll, uh, we'll get back to you on that but uh, you know i i get it uh our covid numbers uh, like i just said are uh, are phenomenal in january we had 740 740 positive cases to date this month i have 34 it it, it is it, it's mind boggling. And, and, I, and I understand from other people I'm talking to that they're seeing maybe not that dramatic of a change, but similar, similar drop in positive cases. I don't know what that means, but uh, uh, before <laughs> our next meeting, I, I'd like to, I'm gonna do a little more local research on that. Uh, we, did, uh, we did have a, a COVID vaccine clinic in our town in number three firehouse. It was only two or three hours and we did 10, 10 people or more. Uh, and, and, and that was during the day. I'm, I'm talking with the county right now of having one on, on a Saturday at number three firehouse because we, we saw that it worked, the bays worked, the going in and going out worked. So we have a, a working model. Uh, I'm gonna try very hard to get one uh, sooner than later. And, and let our people come to a COVID vaccine clinic where you don't need a uh, an appointment. You just show up, and uh, and and I would request that they do what they do. Do they do all of it, including the boosters? So that's uh, that's in the works. Uh, and Don mentioned St. Jude's Parish Center. I stopped up there and and thanked them for being there. Actually, and, and I actually got tested. So. And I, I said, give me one of each, and, and I did. Uh, I didn't get the results yet because only a day or two ago. But uh, but this is the kind of stuff that makes our town great when we can do stuff so people don't have to go to Newton or, or wait in line or, or try to get in and on some calendar. And the more we can do this, I think the better we're going to make this situation. If not for the vaccines, at least for the testing, so we have a moment in time. I've, I've encouraged our employees. Uh, actually, this uh, a very nice woman up there. I think her name is Nicole, a real nice person. Yes. And she says, if, 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 if we needed to, she'll come down to Borough Hall and people don't even have to leave work. And I thought that was very, very gracious of her to do that. So that's how user friendly they are. 
And uh, we'll see how that works. But it's at St. Jude Parish Center. So if you want to go, go. Uh, the uh, If you haven't noticed, there's a radar speed sign on Brooklyn Mountain Road. I don't know if anybody's noticed or not. Uh, but I spoke with uh, with Megan and, and we, we, we purchased this. And this thing doesn't just blink and say, hey, you're going this fast. This thing actually monitors your speed and records it. And so you need to get that word out there. Uh, in, in, in seven days, 15,340 vehicles went past that sign on Brooklyn Mountain Road. That's an average of 2,191 vehicles a day. 6,752 of them were over the speed limit. 8,589 of them were within the speed limit. And that was from February 9th to February 15th. So, uh, and, and we'll move that sign to different places so we can get a, a gauge because people will call up and say, hey, my, my road is a racetrack and we'll send patrol up there and we'll, we'll tie up an officer for a day or two or whatever it takes to monitor it. And it, and it, and it comes up with these same things. So if, if we do this, then we have a scientific model and we build some data, then we know where to set up the radar and if people keep doing it, they're, they're simply going to get tickets and we'll make our roads safer. But we want to do this. And I really want to share the information, let people know we are monitoring your speed. We're doing it uh, at, at a cost in a cost effective way. And so uh, the results of that will be some enforcement eventually, in my in my opinion, anyhow. Uh, today, uh, I had a meeting, a, a Zoom meeting with our federal representative. Uh, and they have this bipartisan infrastructure law that was just passed. And so one of our federal representatives said, well, I'll, I'll send you, the, I'll send you the, the guidebook on it. So I hit print and it's 610 pages. <laughs> and so I filled up a loose leaf book and, and I read through it anyhow. But this thing covers everything from infrastructure to roads, to the, the DOT, to, to some stuff that I'm interested in with, with forest management. It covers a whole bunch of stuff and it is big. Uh, Ron was at the meeting, I did ask some questions and my questions were, had to do with, uh, of course, a lot with PFAS, which we have committed to making our water clean and safe. We have a commitment to that. We will do that. We are doing that. As you saw tonight, we're gonna, we're gonna spend $1.7 million on it, like pretty quick as soon as it's approved. Uh, and by the way, the million dollar bond is a 50 percent forgiveness on that on that loan and so that's called a nano grant and if we're lucky enough to get it uh but again all this money is committed to the municipal water company to make it safe and clean to control something that we had nothing to do with and and i still have issues with the with the numbers the state sent but they set them so i'm not going to waste my time on that we're going to meet the, the state standards, which are much, much lower than federal standards. And, and again, we're gonna have we're gonna have municipal water that's gonna be the, the highest quality and best, if not the state, this in the Northeast, because it will be a zero detect on PFOS and other stuff. Uh, so that's our goal. And as you can see, we've committed the money to it and we're gonna continue to do that until we get it. Now we have to wrestle with the supply chain. So so no that it is on our radar. We have made it, we've made a serious commitment to it and we will continue to, to, to make that commitment to, for our, our water, especially. Uh, I saw people ice fishing out on the lake, they're having a good time in Crescent Cove and they're catching fish and guess what? The water is healthy and the fish love it. So ice fishermen don't go where there's no fish, it's too cold. So we're gonna continue with that and we'll have some opportunities for more aeration in the future. We have some funding and I, we have meetings with the respective mayors and with the, uh, with the, uh, the Lake Commission and Lake Foundation. And we're going to try to get some funding for aeration particularly. And so uh, I don't think I have much more to say except please be careful, please. If our numbers are dropping, please don't let your guard down. Uh, protect yourself and your family with this stupid COVID because it's done enough damage already. And I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to see the numbers are dropping, but just, just be careful. Again, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Lorraine and Ron. 
uh, for our budget. I, I think it's critically important that we do this. And when you could do a zero tax increase, this is our fourth year and I'm loving it, but it's a challenge. And I'm a real pain in the neck with this because, you know, it sounds easy, but when they run the number and say, yep, oh, we got to, we, we can't make it. And, and we call everybody in and say, cut your, cut your budget by 15%. You're not real popular when that happens, but, but we do that. We can do it. We will continue to do it. Uh, nobody's perfect, but we, we, we really would be well served in this economy where everything is going up. The last thing we want to do as a borough is put our hand in your pocket and take out more money if we don't have to. And we're not going to do that. So uh, with that being said, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So I'll make a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a super evening. Good night. Too. Yep. Good night, everyone. Have Good, a good night, everybody. Yep.